Hello, this is Dean McDonald from Tech Skills. In this video, I'll show you some information about computer memory. For example, we'll take a look at the BIOS and CMOS, see if we can find information about system memory, and then I'll also show you how to remove and insert both SD RAM and DDR RAM into your motherboard. Let's begin. Here I have two examples of dual inline memory modules. This one is a 256 megabyte SD RAM, and this one is 256 megabyte DDR RAM. Although they both look very similar, they are slightly different. The SD RAM has two notches. These keyed notches allow you to insert it properly into the motherboard slot. DDR RAM only has one notch. SD RAM has 168 pins, or these little contacts on the RAM, while DDR has 184. Although they're very similar sizes and they look very similarly, they're not physically compatible with each other. Here I have a motherboard that I removed from the computer so you can get a good look at it. On the motherboard here are the memory slots. Slots are long and rectangular. They have plastic tabs on the end. This is what holds the RAM chips in place. Stencil on the motherboard is information about these RAM chips. In this case it says DIMM0. So we would put our first memory into the first slot. And then this one says DIMM1. So we have to put our second memory into the second slot. Over on the side of the memory, it says DDR184. So these slots allow us to put in DDR184 pin RAM. To install the RAM, first you open up the plastic tabs. And then you line up the notch. Make sure that your keyed notch is lined up with the slot. And then as you insert the RAM, there's little plastic holders on the end of the tab. Make sure that the RAM module slides into that holder on both ends. That will hold the RAM in place. And then once the RAM is in place, you push straight down on the RAM chip, locking those plastic tabs in place. You don't want to rock the memory side to side. You could break it off. So you want to make sure you push straight down. And those plastic tabs should click and lock into place. And then once it's locked into place, those plastic tabs have little holes here that will hold it in place. Here I have an SD RAM module. As you can see, it'll physically fit down into this DDR slot, but with those keyed notches, I'm not able to push it into place. With enough force, you may be able to get one side to lock in, so you've got to make sure that you know which type of slots that you have, and then insert the proper RAM. Otherwise, you could damage the slots and or the RAM modules. To remove the RAM modules, simply press the plastic tabs. That will pop the RAM up out of its holder, and then you can remove it from the slot, and then place it into your anti-static bag. Here's an example of a motherboard that supports two different types of RAM. We have SD RAM slots here, two slots, and then we have DDR RAM. Can't have both SD RAM and DDR RAM in at the same time. You can only have one or the other. In this case, we're using one stick of DDR RAM. I'm going to boot up this computer and take a look at the BIOS and CMOS information, see if we find information about our RAM, and then I'm also going to install a second chip so we can see what types of setting changes may be made to our computer looking again at the BIOS and our CMOS settings. This computer had one stick of DDR RAM installed. I'll boot the computer, take a look around the BIOS and the CMOS, and see if we can find out some information about this RAM module. As the computer boots, it goes through the power on self test. One of the things it completes is a memory test. Once it completes the power on self test, we can see some information. I've pressed the pause break key on this machine. So we can see memory testing. We have 262,144 kilobytes of memory. Our DRAM clock is running at 266 megahertz. I'll press the delete key and go into the CMOS setup, see if we can find some information about our memory. Bottom of the standard CMOS features screen, we can see the extended memory and total memory, 262,144 kilobytes of memory. So this has a 256 megabyte stick of RAM in it. Under the advanced chipset features, we can see information about our DRAM clock and our drive control. On the DRAM clock drive control screen, we can see that our current front side bus frequency is 200 megahertz. Our current DRAM frequency is 266 megahertz, and our DRAM clock is running at 
133 megahertz. So that tells us some information about our DRAM, in this case our DDR RAM. One last setting in this CMOS is under the frequency voltage control. In this case we can enable or disable our auto detect of our DIM and our PCI clock. In this case it is enabled. So those are some of the main features to look for in the BIOS and the CMOS regarding your system memory. If you need to replace memory or upgrade, you need to know what type of slots you have, what form factor you're using for your RAM, and then also the clock speed and the maximum size that your computer supports. To consult the owner's manual of your motherboard to verify the maximum supported RAM and then also the maximum speed. For instance, this machine is using DDR2100 RAM. I can put DDR2700 in this machine and it will still function, although it will run at the 2100 speed. Now I've installed a second stick of DDR RAM. Now we'll boot the computer and see if we can find some information about the new stick of RAM. As the machine boots, some machines will pause and tell you that there's been a memory change. This one happens to just go through a memory test and it will display on the screen how much memory this computer has in it. I'll press the delete key and enter the CMOS setup and then we can look at the settings here. One of the main ones that's going to change is the standard CMOS features. Again, down at the bottom, our total memory has changed from 262 to 524,000 kilobytes of RAM. So our second stick of RAM was another 256 megabytes, so 256 plus 256, we have 512 megabytes of RAM. In this video, I demonstrated how to remove and install memory modules. I also showed you how to look in the BIOS and CMOS for different memory settings. You need to know this information if you're going to be performing RAM upgrades. You need to know which type of memory you're using and also the amount of memory that the machine supports. You should practice installing and removing RAM. It's one of the easiest ways to perform a system upgrade. It generally can increase performance and it's relatively cheap to do. So practice this on your own and good luck and thanks for watching.